All right. Out with the old, in with the new. This one is called Black Eyes. Mm. All right, this one's got a very clean scent to it. I'm liking this one. I'm going to award it a J.C. McMaster's Odor Award. I'm Ranger Grant. This is my park. Around here we go down the slide. Don't be messing around in my park. Okay, so in my last video, I predicted that uh, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi would indeed go to Taiwan despite the Chinese government warning her not to do so. And... Despite what they said, the Chinese government wouldn't take any sort of military action on account of that happening. Well, I was mostly correct. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, she went to Taiwan. But I would hardly say that the uh, Chinese government and military had no reaction to that whatsoever. They didn't do a lot, but they're doing something, and that ain't nothing. Uh, right now, they're doing military drills with their Navy. You know, they got their ships circling around the island of Taiwan, firing off their guns, their rockets, their missiles into the ocean. They're basically harassing Taiwan, but they're not actually attacking them. Uh, also, they've cut off some trade going to Taiwan. They've sanctioned Nancy Pelosi and her family. And they've cut off uh, ties to the United States. They're not going to talk to us about climate change or their military or anything, right? So, yeah, there were some consequences to Nancy Pelosi going to Taiwan, and there might be more. This might keep escalating. You know, the Chinese government, they might decide to, you know, run an embargo against the United States or, you know, give us some high tariffs. They're going to try to attack us economically, is what I'm saying, instead of, you know, using the military. Now, if that happens, should we blame Nancy Pelosi for it? Well, realistically, I would say no. This, the Chinese government, they're deciding to be assholes, and that should be on them. But, if you look at this through the eyes of political theater, which Nancy is a queen of, then yes, this is very much her fault. You know, people warned her about going to Taiwan, saying, hey, you go there, there could be consequences for everyone. Because of your actions. And all she had to say is, No! Nobody tells me what to do. I'm Nancy Pelosi. And she went to Taiwan and this happened. Like I said, if you just look at through it with that sort of vapid, empty way of thinking, political theater, then yeah, she deserves all the shit that she's going to get. Okay, I'm going to give you partial credit on this one. Because that is... What it ended with, but that ain't what it ended when. Yeah, which would have been September 3rd, 1783. That's when America truly became independent. I should be trashing my park. What are you supposed to be? I'm Ranger Grant. And this is my park. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Next time, Ranger. Next time. Okay, so in my last video, I said that if you look at things through the eyes of political theater, which Nancy Pelosi is quite the queen of, that vapid mentality, that one-dimensional way of thinking, that she is to blame for the problems that we and Taiwan are having with China right now. She went and visited Taiwan, and that's what got this all started. And who knows where it's going. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention, because I didn't have a lot of time, is that that visit of hers to Taiwan, the catalyst that got it all going, completely pointless. <laughs> it served no purpose Whatsoever, something that could first could have been done over a Zoom meeting. She didn't actually have to go to Taiwan to do basically what she did there. And the speeches that she gave were both incoherent and inconsequential. All right, and that's why I want to focus on the inconsequential. 
is that she basically went there and said, hey, nothing has changed. We're going to keep doing the same thing we're always doing when it comes to Taiwan. We're going to promise to defend you. And that was it. There was nothing new. There was no real reason she needed to go to Taiwan to say that, that nothing had changed. Because nothing had changed. We're not going to put an embassy in Taiwan. We're not going to put any military uh, installations in Taiwan. We're not going to have our Navy constantly patrolling around Taiwan. We're not going to give them any more money or any more weapons. And we're not, and this is key, going to recognize Taiwan as an independent nation. All of these things would have, you know, amounted to a change, and that would have been a reason for her to go there. But none of that happened. So why did she even need to go to Taiwan to do that? Once again, grandstanding, virtue signaling, political theater. She might have had some other business on the side. I won't even get into that. But basically, it was a completely pointless endeavor to begin with. And now, we're all going to be facing consequences on account of it. Oh, and speaking of defending Taiwan, shouldn't we be doing that right now? Because the Chinese military is circling around their island, firing up the guns and the missiles and rockets into the ocean, harassing Taiwan, yet we're nowhere to be found. So what's going on? Does Taiwan not want us there? Or are we not going there? Because it seems that we're so key to defending Taiwan, we should be moving in right about now. <laughs> All right. Here's this month's trivia question. According to the candy company that makes it, who is Baby Ruth named after? Now, before you be a bunch of smart asses and say Baby Ruth, I'm looking for the proper name on this one. Who is the Baby Ruth that Baby Ruth is named after, according to the candy company? Companies across the U.S. are so desperate to hire and keep members of Gen Z. Ah, forget those bums. The people you really ought to hire is Generation Alpha. That's right. They'll do twice the work for half the pay. These two, they've already got jobs. What do you do? I'm the street sweeper. What's your job? Lightkeeper.